Okay, so this week we're talking about hearing. We're talking about exercising our spiritual senses. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. And remember, to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritual minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is enmity against God. So we need to exercise these senses so that we are not carnal. We don't see things with our carnal eyes and let them dictate what our life's about or hear with our carnal ears and let what we hear dictate what we are and who we are and what goes on in our life. No, we got to hear from God. We got to see what he's doing in the earth and then respond to it that way. Okay, that's what we're talking talking about this week. I'm Keith Brown. This is Tac Room Devotional. Turn your Bibles to Revelation chapter 2. All right? <clears throat> okay, so here Jesus is talking to the seven churches. Now, again, many people look at these churches. Some think that they are uh, churches from old, which he, they refer to, like the first one is the church at Ephesus. But I think these are types of churches that exist even today. Okay, that's my personal opinion, and you can either receive that or, better yet, study it out. Find out for yourself. Some folks talk about disp dispensational uh, um, uh, dispensationalism, how that all works, and, and, uh, uh, and some people think these are all chronologically things. Anyway, for me, again, I think that these churches are active today, and this is a type of church. So here in uh, verse 1, it says, To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he, that's Jesus, who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those things which are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have per persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Boy, that's all really good, right? But now watch. And then he goes, however, nevertheless, I have this against you. And so then he starts speaking about the problem that they have by forgetting their first love, which is him. Now look, jump down with ver to verse 7, and it says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Okay, so again, this is a type of church. This is the way I feel. This is a type of church. Right now, there's many, many people that call themselves Christians, and, and, you know, Paul refers to some Christians as carnal Christians. In other words, they're hooked up with the world. And even though they go to church and even though they're listening to the word and all that kind of stuff, their life is still wrapped around the world. The love of the world is first and foremost in their life. They're more concerned about their careers and their families and their homes and their horses and all the rest of this stuff. And, and we need to make sure that our first love is God and Jesus Christ. Amen? And so it says here then in verse 7, he who has an ear, let him hear. He gives us instructions. He says, you're doing good here, you're doing good there, but however, you've lost your first love. Get back to it. It says, repent and come back. Amen. And he who has an ear, spiritual ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Look with me in verse 5 because now it's a new church, it's the persecuted church, and the angel church in, uh, and to the angel of the church in uh, Smyrna write, these things says the first and the last who, de uh, who was dead and came to life. And once again, he starts telling them about, first of all about himself, but then also about the good deeds that they've done. But look at verse 11, he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit of the church uh, says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Now, again, what he does here, um, uh, again, this is the persecuted church, uh, and he says, you are under persecution, and many people in the church today are under persecution. But he tells us in this passage what we need to do if we're under persecution as a church, and then he tells us how to overcome. Look at verse uh, 12. And to the angel of the church of uh, Pergamos, write these things I say, uh, uh, these things says he who has the sharp two edged sword. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast to my name. And again, he starts telling the good things that he's, he does, or, or they're doing. But then he goes on in verse 14, but I have a few things against you. Uh, because you have 
they are those who hold the doctrine, doctrine of Balaam and who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel. And so he tells them, listen, you, um, you're compromising. You're compromising with the world. You're, you're receiving gods of this world and you're starting to worship them and encourage other people to worship. But notice what it says in verse 17. Um, he who has an ear, let him hear what the uh, Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on a stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. So once again, he first tells them, this is what you're doing good, this is what you're doing wrong, you're, you're, you're giving in to carnal stuff, and then he says, however, if you overcome this stuff, and he tells us how to overcome, you're victorious. Amen. We're going to pick this up again tomorrow. Remember, I'm Keith Brown. This is Attack Room Devotional. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.